everyone. Welcome back to another Fun Fact Friday here at University Animal Clinic. I'm Dr. Samanowitz, and today I want to talk to you about something that hits really close to home because it happened to me and my pup um, back in September. And it's a disease called bloat, or that's the general term. It's also called gastric dilatation and then volvulus or GDV. And that's where the stomach fills with air. That's the bloat part, the gastric dilatation part. And then if it twists on itself, that's the volvulus. This is one of the few true veterinary emergencies. And that's because once that stomach flips on itself, it can cut off blood vessels to the stomach and the spleen and even back to the heart causing shock. And as those tissues can lose blood supply and start to degrade, there can even be sepsis later on. So the key is speed of care. So what do you need to look for? So you can make sure you get here to us ASAP so we can take care of this disease. You're gonna see your, your pet's stomach start to get big and swollen. You may notice them retching or dry heaving, um, vomiting with nothing coming up or except for maybe a little bit of foam. You may also see them hiding. Um, that's what my sheepdog did. She was kind of hiding in a corner like something's not right, which is not usually like her. She likes to be right where the action is. So seeing those abnormal behaviors, especially that swollen, tense abdomen, why does this happen? It tends to happen in our large breed, deep chested dogs. So the old English sheepdog, um, like mine, Weimaraners, Dobermans, Great Danes, um, any of those large, deep chested breeds. I'm gonna put a list of the most common breeds that this happens to in the comments down below. So if you're concerned if it's one of your pets, you can look there too. So that'll be listed down below for you. But these breeds tend to have a big meal and then run around. Um, sometimes it's just eating that big meal. Some people feel like raised food dishes could be a cause, but we can't get an exact link to this specific cause. But those are some thoughts as to how and um, why this occurs in some of these guys. And it just has to do with the position of the stomach and how it fills with food and then moves around. So again, because of the way this cuts off blood vessels, this is a true emergency. So getting here to us ASAP, this has a pretty good outcome if we can get to it fast enough and unflip that stomach. Um, and of course, it's after hours, going to the emergency room is really important. Again, making sure that a surgeon gets to that pet as soon as possible to decompress and then unrotate that stomach. So this can be really scary. Trust me, I know I went through it in September. It's very scary. But just remember, we're here for you. Your veterinary emergency hospitals are here for you. Get to us as soon as possible. Your pet's gonna need surgery. They're probably gonna need to spend a couple days in the hospital, but it is treatable. But here's the other thing I wanted to bring up. And the other main reason is that I wanted to bring this up too is we can prevent it, especially in these breeds that we think it happens in. How do we prevent it? There's a procedure called a gastropexy. And what this means is we tack the stomach to the side of the body wall. Um, and this prevents the stomach from being able to flip because it's kind of tacked in place now. This can be done and we recommend it, I recommend it here at University Animal Clinic for all of those puppies in that kind of breed category when they're getting spayed or neutered. They're gonna be under anesthesia, particularly in a spay, we're gonna already be in the abdomen and we can do that tack. It doesn't add a whole lot of extra anesthesia time. In the males, they may get extra incision, but it can really save a life. And I think we can save a lot of lives if we know in advance and perform this procedure in our pets as puppies, we might be able to prevent it from ever getting to the point where you need to have a trip to the emergency room like I did. And so I hope that by sharing my story with my puppy and my experience here that we've had with pets, um, in the past that get this disease that we can make it forefront in our mind when we're talking about spaying and neutering our pets and help prevent it in the future. So I hope we saved a few large breed lives here today. And if you have another topic for the next Fun Fact Friday, leave it in the comments below. Um, and I hope to see you here next Friday. Again, like and share this video. I love seeing these go all over the place. I wanna help as many lives as we can. And direct message us if you have any other questions. Thanks.